It is the Seinfeld finale of the Joker universe. I just got out of my second viewing of Joker Folia 2. Was it better or worse? Uh, heads up, we're going into some spoilery territory on Joker Folia 2. I got the sneaking suspicion that we're not giving the people what they want. Joker Folia 2 hit the ground running with a D on cinema score and $40 million opening weekend, but I've seen it two times. You can see my review of it up top here. Uh, you can check it out because, and I did a, an ending explain type thing. I have a different interpretation than apparently a lot of people on online. I enjoyed the movie that I first go around, but was that to remain true on my second? Let's talk a little bit about that. So I went into this obviously liking it the first time, but I saw all the negative complaints. I saw it before my first viewing as well, but I saw even more negative complaints. It seems to be the hip thing to do is complain about this movie and how much it sucks. So let's just get right into it. Does it suck? Sing hallelujah. Come on, get happy. I don't think it does at all. Is it perfect? No. Is it better than the first one? Probably not. Let's talk about the musical aspects to this. I think around the 22 minute mark is when you hear your first real song. And then I think it's a few minutes later, they get into the full musical scope that it wants to be. I will say this. I would, so from the beginning, I thought the going from talkative to musical was seamless off the top. I thought the first few songs were seamless, effortless, and it fit right into the narrative that was jo Joker, Folia Duh. And even the first movie, I think it kind of works in that world of the Joker. That being said, as it goes along, especially towards the end, I would say the last few songs, definitely two of the last three, if not all three of the last songs, probably could have been cut, if not shortened. I, I would have, like the last one, the last one probably could have been cut because it, it does because this is when you're at the end you're at the end of the movie you know where it's going you know what's happening and they cut to a song and you're like all right let's move on that being said it didn't take away from my movie it just it does drag a little and this movie is very thin on plot and it's almost like they added these songs to stretch out to stretch this film out into however long it is over two hours and it doesn't i don't think it needs to be over two hours it could have been a lot shorter some of the songs like i said i think they work fine they fit in the narrative perfectly and then, especially towards the end, I think you really get distracted and detracted from, by the, from the movie with those songs as well. That being said, I still think it's the best looking movie of the year. I, I defy you to find a nicer looking movie. I think Lauren Scher, the cinematographer, uh, who did a standout job in the first Joker, I think he came to play in this one. And I think it would be criminal. I know the movie's not loved by critics or fans, but I think it would be criminal not for like the Academy Awards or something to, to recognize the achievement that's happened here. Uh, even though, you know, it's very similar looking to the first movie, but not even not even because the musical aspects he gets to even bring out more. And I think he really hit the ball out of the park. And I mentioned that in my other review as well. The other thing I've got to say is in the, my first review and my first viewing, I thought Joaquin Phoenix was spectacular. Nothing changes here whatsoever. He's still a tour de force, as they say, like, you know, it's over over the top. But he's he's so good. Halfway through the movie, my wife who didn't know that it was getting scolded or uh, by critics and fans and didn't know it was bombing at the box office, she turned to me and she said, they're all getting nominated for this, right? Because Joaquin, whatever you think of the movie, whatever you think of the turn of the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix brings his A-game, as always. But in this one, he really like throws it out of the park. In my first viewing of it, I thought Harley Quinn was underused and utilized, but... and. and like I have a, my interpretation is that she is a, a personality within Joker's head. I think Joker has three personalities. I say this in my other review. I believe Joker has his echo, his shadow and him. And they're all three. And we see it from the point of view of Arthur Fleck. And we see like this Harley Quinn characters trying to emerge. And also, but then there's like the full blown Joker of it all. I think there's three versions of him living with, inside of his head through the whole movie. And I think she's really good in this too. I don't know if she's Academy Award, but maybe, you know, supporting actress nomination perhaps she is very strong and obviously her musical talents are on full display for for a little bit she's not she doesn't she doesn't get as much to do as joker in the musical numbers which was a surprise still both times watching it but she stands out she's really good in, in in the movie and that leads us to what is real and what isn't in the first joker obviously we see that a lot of that movie was played out in his head this movie i feel the exact same way but they don't explicitly show you like they do in the first movie i think it's easy to to calculate that all of the musical sequences, especially the big dramatic ones, are all within Arthur Fleck's mind. But does it go beyond that? I believe it does. I think it goes well beyond that. I think most of this movie is actually in his mind. I'm maybe I even think the courtroom stuff, we're not seeing exactly what is happening in the courtroom. We're seeing Arthur Fleck's version of it within 
uh, in his own mind of how that's playing out. If it's even playing out, because I, I think this movie takes a turn. There's two parts of this movie. Uh, and I'd probably have to watch it a third time to really understand, to really figure it out maybe. Or maybe I'm just off. But there's a part early on, right away, where he he eats some, he takes his meds, right? He takes his meds. Soon after that, uh, a guard says, How about you, Arthur? Do you still think you're a star? And after that, like his his character also changes because it very much becomes about him. At the beginning, like, do you have a joke? And he's in cell he's in the like ward E and then he gets brought into ward B and it's kind of like, okay, you can kind of buy how it's happening, but would it really work out? And he spends a lot more time in ward B than just that one off. And, and so I think all of Harley Quinn is in his mind. However, I could also, and we're going to have a conversation about this on the channel at another time where maybe Harley Quinn is real, but he's also manifested that into him as well. But I just like there's a whole thing where when he first goes to ward B, they say, this is what you could have had Arthur if you didn't kill five people and he's in ward E and then they assure everybody there. But, and that's also when you find the mysterious character as well, who has a, a very uh, narcissistic imposing smile on his face a few times and looks very scary. And then um, ultimately at the end comes back and kills Arthur, which in, for me, uh, he is the sh he is the shadow that is referred to in this movie by Pepe Le Pew, uh, the shadow. And he is a character who's always there. He's just, this character is always in the background, always there. They cut to him a few times, but he's always paying attention. And then at the end, he stabs Arthur and kills Arthur dead. And, in, and my interpretation is that when Arthur dies, it, Arthur, the good person, the character, the character you're watching this whole movie who wants to break free of this Joker persona is then gutted by his shadow who finally overtakes him, which is the Joker, and he fully becomes the Joker. You get this from the opening animation where his shadow separates from him and goes on stage and does the Murray Frank and stuff on stage. So you get that, and the whole movie is about this dual personality. I think it might be more about three personalities, but it could be just the two. Harley Quinn, again, I think that's part of his, his, his mentality as well. But still, I like the movie. I think it does go on a little long, kind of drags towards the end, Probably could have cut out a couple of those songs. And I totally understand when people like don't like it versus the first movie and they say it ruins the Joker. I don't think it ruins the Joker. I think it's it's a like I said, it's a thin plot, but I think it fleshes out Arthur Fleck as a character and shows you this is a guy who's a mentally unstable, has all these issues, can't handle them, and at the end loses to these issues. I think there's some very powerful performances, like I said, by Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Lady Gaga is very good. Brendan Gleeson, in my opinion, is a standout in this. He toes, I said this before, but he tries that line of like friend and foe uh, beautifully. There's a character called Ricky who kind of befriends Arthur, I guess, kind of in a way. I also thought at first that he might be a part, like just a friend that he created. And, and I still do think that he's a friend that he creates. And then Brendan Gleeson's character kills him at the end. And then so the innocence of Arthur is gone in that moment. And that's and so there's I think there's I think it's a it's a layered movie. I don't know if I'd call it a masterpiece, but maybe for a clickbait uh, video I would. But I think it's a spectacular movie. I thought it was a, I just thought it was a lot of fun. I thought until like you know like I said it drags at the end. There's a moment at the end. There was a song that came on and my wife turned to me and she goes, "Okay, we get it." And I was like, "Yeah, you know what? Me too." I'm like, "I know where you're going. Let's get there." And I think that's the viewing that a lot of people have is I know you're going, you get there. But I don't think it takes away from Arthur Fleck in the first movie. I think it it kind of shows you the full scope of him and how Joker is actually truthfully born. But if you want to see my full thoughts on it, you can go over to that video on the channel too where it's my spoiler review. This is also a spoiler talk. But D, D on Cinema Score, they're saying it's worse than Madam Web. I haven't seen Madam Web. So you know what it is? You know what this is? It is the Seinfeld finale of the Joker universe. That's what it is. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, put on a happy face.